Hello everyone, it's Linda Ockall Jenner here again with another SBCN Small Biz Perspectives. And we have a wonderful guest with us tonight, Jessica Sloan. She's a rapid transformation coach and specialist whose ex expertise is to help her clients get to the root of their critical voice. She has over 10 years experience in human resources and brings that to her practice. She's also trained in rapid transformation therapy, an award-winning method created by world-renowned Marissa Peer. Jessica uses rapid transformation therapy and that uses hypnosis and other powerful techniques to help her clients break free from their own critical voice. And Jessica, welcome uh, to SBCN Small Biz Perspectives. I'm going to let you take it from there because I'll lose my voice. <laughs> I've, been, I've been talking all day. Um, thank you for coming along tonight. Um, what is the name of your company? My company is called Inspired Living. That's so I sort of named it sort of what we were talking about, the critical voice. I really help my clients sort of break free so they can live more of a life that feels more, has more of an ease and more of a joy to it. So that's sort of where the name for my business came from. That's amazing. And um, you're very lucky. You've just come back, I think, from Miami. Yeah, I did. I was down in Miami doing more rapid transformation therapy training and I met Marissa Peer. Um, she's a wonderful person and I was just so glad to do more training and get to watch her in action. I think I watched three hypnotherapy sessions while I was down there delivered by her. So that was really incredible. And uh, she's a Brit, I think, isn't she like me? Yeah, she is a Brit, but most recently her and her husband just moved to L.A. So oh, my God. I'm so jealous. I love L.A. <laughs> yes, that's where they're living now because she's doing a lot of training in the United States and Canada now. So I think because she's over there a lot of the time and it's nice weather, I think she just decided to make the move. It makes sense. And um, you wanted to talk about something very specific tonight, didn't you, Jessica? So would you lead us into it, please? Yeah, so what I wanted to talk about is a lot of what I work already with my clients. Um, it's about the critical voice, but then it's going beyond that. How do we hardwire praise and make it more familiar to our mind? Um, we often, I think all of us, most of us at one point in our life have experienced a strong critical voice that sort of held us back. And when we can start to create more praise in the mind, that's where we can create more long lasting and more permanent change. And so we talked a bit about Marissa Peer and she really, she created rapid transformation therapy, which really gets to the root of this cr critical voice. And I often tell my clients and I tell people, you know, when I'm talking to them about what we do, the critical voice is really, it isn't our fault. We have this negativity bias that's hardwired into the primitive brain. And it's always on the lookout for threats. It's always on the lookout for danger. But the good news is we can start to rewire our brain towards more praise and towards being more loving, supportive, and caring towards ourselves. But we have to understand a little bit of how the mind works um, to really make this change. Wow, that's amazing because um, there's many different instances where people would need this kind of help. And weird as it sounds, I was at a networking event, my own networking event, SBC and Coffee Connect the other day, uh, talking to uh, another guy who does almost the same thing, he's just not completely the same. And he was yeah. talking along those lines and it really interests me because I, I guess when we talk about praise, is it sometimes difficult to praise ourselves because we feel that, something happened in our younger days, maybe in our childhood, that, that put us in this mindset that we felt we weren't good enough? Yeah, so it does often start in childhood. So when in childhood, we often, most of us ex have difficult experiences. You know, maybe it's at school, maybe it's with our parents, but it usually shows up somewhere. And But the difference is when we're a child, we don't have a lot of resources. We don't have a lot of choice over the situation. So we're very powerless as a child, but mm -hmm. that gets sort of ingrained in our subconscious. And we carry this on to adulthood, but what I really like to help my clients do is really transform this, get to the root of it, and then start hardwiring in the praise. And praise isn't being 
and it's not always being positive all the time, but it's even giving herself praise even through the difficult times, if that makes sense. Um, because sometimes, you know, we're going through a lot of challenges and we start beating ourselves up. Yeah. But a more, a more proactive thing to do is, you know, to tell ourselves that we have wonderful coping mechanisms. And that's something Marissa Pierre talks about a lot is, you know, we can praise ourselves that even though even though this is really, really challenging, you know, I have the tools to deal with this and I'm doing the, the best that I can and I'm going to get through this. And so that's really what praise is about. It's not denying our feelings. We can oh. still be in tune with what we feel. But even if, say, we're going to go do a presentation, we acknowledge maybe we feel a little bit nervous, but then we tell our minds that we're excited to do this, that we choose to do this. Now, that we sounds don't want... like me. That sounds like me because yeah. every time I get up on that stage, I am nervous, but I'm so excited to be there. What about the people who, so if we don't get this kind of help, I guess we'll struggle all our lives. Yeah, often we do struggle and it doesn't always show up in every area of our lives. Like sometimes some people, you know, they'll have really great loving relationships, but they might struggle at work. Yeah. Um, but often it does tend to show up somewhere um, because it's something that we learned as a child. And one of the other rules of the mind is it's always moving towards what is familiar. But we can create a new familiar to the mind. And that's where the repetition comes in to really hardwire praise into the mind. And we have to do it on a consistent and daily basis. So um, how do we do that? How do we, do we have to keep repeating the same thing time and time again? Is that what the hardwire is all about? Yeah, yeah. A lot of times we do. We do have to keep... Um, really repeating the same words. One of the things I do to sort of help this process in my own practice is I create hypnosis recordings that my clients listen to and that starts to get embedded into the subconscious. So they listen to that even beyond the sessions that we work together and even after we stop working together. But we can also do this even without a hypnosis recording, start to become very, very aware of our thoughts. And we want to be very careful with the negative things that we're telling ourselves. And like I said, you can, you know, you can check in and know that you're feeling a bit sad, but you don't want to make the, make it bigger than it is because the mind hears everything we say to it. Yeah, that, that's a really good way. We don't realize that, do we? We, we have no idea that it's a bit like um, we've got this Google thing where you say, hey, Google, do this. Hey, Google, do that. And people yeah. are getting really scared saying, oh, they're listening to everything we say. A, they haven't got the time and B, we have to train it like we've got to train our mind <laughs> in order yeah. to know what to give feedback to us. So this is beginning, beginning to feel like the future now and robots are taking over. Um, so, for instance, what would be some of the, I mean, obviously you can't tell us your clients' names and stuff like that, but what would be some instances where people have sought your help and, and need this kind of therapy? Yeah, so a lot of my clients, I tend to attract a lot of clients that have already started to do this process. They might, they may even have tried other types of therapy and it may have helped them. Yeah. But they're really looking to get to the real root of what's going on. And so, like I said, my clients are already quite self aware. And I've had clients saying, you know, you know, I've looked at a lot of different things, but I'm still not sure what's really going on. Because the difference between me and some other type of practitioners is I really work with the subconscious. So some techniques only work with the conscious mind, and there is a difference. So our conscious mind is our day-to-day -day thinking. That's, you know, when we're making choices, we're making decisions in our life. And our subconscious is the, that programmed response, that automatic knee-jerk reaction. And that's something, as we talked about, that's really developed in childhood. And so I really specialize in the subconscious. So as a parent, um, I don't know whether other parents will be asking this question. Did, uh, if, we, if, if we're normal parents and we're not being cruel to our children and we're giving them food and love and all those things, nurturing them, like, is it? Are we responsible for some of the things that happen to our children then 
and and that and it comes out in later life is it because we didn't praise them enough or um i don't know because they were bullied at school or, or will we never know uh sometimes it can be a bit of both like you know i have clients that you know have come from parents where the parents were quite neglectful but i've also had cases where people come from quite happy childhoods but there's still small things that happen along the way because i think on some level we are you know we're humans and you know we're sensitive and you know our feelings can get hurt and sometimes what happens even with really great parents who are loving attentive and they meet the needs of their children they sometimes kids just don't understand fully what's going on and it's at no fault of the parent but we perceive our reality when we're a child it can be something totally different and kids I think don't I remember all- those days <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because kids don't always have the language even to always express it to their parents. Yes, that, that, um, that makes I, sense. I know a lot from my case, I'm quite close to my parents, but there was things in childhood that I couldn't express to them of struggles that were going on. I was bullied a lot at school and I didn't know how to verbalize it. And so some of that stuff we carry later and you know, we can come from great loving parents. I feel better now because <laughs> having four adult children, I think, who, <laughs> you know, I created this. That's another thing. Does this help us get rid of guilt? I'm, I don't know about men, but women carry a lot of guilt around with us, don't we? I mean, does it help yeah. with that? Yeah, I think it does because I think sometimes when I have clients come to me too when we're going back to what the root cause might be, a lot of times they think, "Oh, you know, they think of something and they go, that's not the problem." And they're actually quite surprised what emerges because a lot of times we don't it's sometimes the smallest little, you know, it can be a very small or minor thing, but it was a big thing for us as a child. And we really need to acknowledge that part. And when we can acknowledge that part with more love and care, that's when we can help transform the guilt because that child finally gets to be heard. So interesting. Um, funny question, but I'll ask you, is it ever too late for the help? I mean, do, do people no. sometimes, no? No, I work with people of all ages. I don't work with kids, but I work anyone from 18 plus and up. And I've had people come in at all different ages. And, you know, lots of lots of my clients have done personal work, but sometimes they just want to go a little bit deeper. And I think it's not always uh, looking for what's wrong. It's just sometimes my clients come and they, they want more from their lives. Yeah. And it's not always, it's sometimes that they just want to have new experiences and that critical voice, that old voice is getting in the way of stepping in to it's those it's new experiences. So like somebody might want to public speak, yeah. but every time they go to do it, they feel very scared, they feel very frightened and they just can't push themselves to do it. So sometimes, you know, going a little deeper can really get to the root cause of what's holding them back. And what I like about you, Jessica, you're continually learning and and finding new techniques and new ways. You're not one of these um, people that say, well, I know it all. I don't need to, to go any further and learn anymore. Because I would imagine even in this field, things are changing, aren't they? And, and you discover new ways to help your, your, your clients. Yeah, no, you're always learning. And I think right now we're just sort of on the cusp of really understanding how the brain works. Like, I think, you know, we're just really learning how to rewire the brain to create more change. And there's a lot of people out there, you know, like Marissa Peer and lots of other ones that are really, really bringing this to the forefront. And I'm really excited in the next five to 10 years to see what else, you know, comes out. And one of the reasons I wanted to train with Marissa Peer too, is she really promotes continuous education credits. And, you know, we have to do that requirement every year that we're continuously learning, we're learning new things to bring back to our clients. Yeah, so this is such an interesting conversation. We have to carry this on you know, with another video soon. But, you know, sh sh in closing, really, I mean, how do people decide who can help them? How would they find out about your kind of techniques or someone else? I mean, do, do they Google to find out or what, you know? Yeah, so, I mean, for 
my clients, I, a lot of my clients, how they come to me is through referrals because they hear from, you know, somebody else that I help them and, you know, create change in their life. So that's one way. And then a lot of clients are looking online. They're really, I think they're looking for something a bit different. They're looking how to really change it on a more subconscious level. And so some of my clients are stumbling across rapid transformation therapy. They're stumbling across you know, Marissa Peer, and then they go look for a therapist in their area. So yeah. that's how another another way that clients have found me. Um, what about the health professionals, say the family doctor, would they recommend that it would be good to visit someone who can offer this kind of therapy? Yeah, I, I mean, I haven't connected as much with medical doctors, but I've connected with a lot of like massage therapists and stuff. Um, so it's definitely good to have those connections of people that are sort of working either in a health profession or a wellness profession, because they're often the ones that are, you know, talking to people and, you know, they talk to them and sometimes they find out that they might have an area that they're struggling a bit with and then they recommend them to somebody else. Yeah, it's really, really good. Now, I don't suppose, like we live in Canada, well, we live in Ontario, don't we? This kind of thing isn't covered on OHIP, I'm, I'm sure it's not. It's one of those things no. that maybe, no. It's such a shame, isn't it? Because you and I are both into the, you know, find out the challenges early, prevent yeah. if possible, and then, you know, if not, early detection. So this is one of the things that I think would prevent, you know, say some of the mental health challenges, depression, maybe help, you know, steer them into being quite so serious. Uh, if if yeah. people could afford to, to come along to you. It's been an amazing journey listening to to um, how excited you are that, you know, you met Marissa. She sounds absolutely adorable. And, of course, she's a Brit, so she must be. <laughs> yeah. But um, well, I'm really, really in. – it's changed a lot. In my day, um, a long time ago in England, I've told you before I went to a the therapist, but it does appear that things have changed a lot since then. So I'm excited to hear some more. Um, and how can we contact you? Yeah, so people can contact me by going to my website. My website is www. J Sloan. Uh, Sloan is S L O A N. Inspiredliving.com. And then, or contacting me at J Sloan Inspired Living at gmail.com. That's fantastic. So I hope we can um, book some more time to get together and do, do this again, Jessica, because I want to hear lots more about it. It really interests me and it's good for everybody out there. So have a lovely yeah. evening. Yeah, you too.